Hello everyone, we are here with Eric Young, the CEO and founder of iTutor. Eric, thank you very much for, for making the time to, to talk to us. Um, iTutor is just an amazing organization and, and it's really disrupting the way we understand and we do learning. So can you start by telling us a little bit more about the history of iTutor? Sure. iTutor Group has established uh, for 21 years already and uh, it's a unique organization. We don't have any single classroom. However, we have uh, more than 3,000 teachers around the world, and we serve uh, 30 million sessions uh, in a year. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, it's uh, one of the largest education group, however, without any classroom. Without any <laughs> classroom. And, and let me ask you, this, you were using digital technology That's exactly right. to leverage that. And one key aspect of the research we do is on the cultural side, because education, it, it's something that has some traditional classroom and the way we are educated. That's right. So how do you see the challenges and the opportunities of, of shifting not only technology, but also the way people understand education? Yeah, back in 20 years ago when we started business, it's really difficult for us to you know, tell the market that uh, online education is the future. Because at that time, people still rely on traditional school and plus some e-learning. But what we do is uh, we choose the very difficult, difficult path which is so we move the teacher online. And teachers online teaching student life in a one-on-three, one-on-five kind of format. And in that way that we be able to first be able to do an individualization of a, uh, of a learner, but at the same time we'll be able to make a very big scale because everything is online. So, um, I think the digital transformation definitely in the beginning is hard, especially the infrastructure like the bandwidth at that time when we started business is only 56k. Oh, yeah. But right now it's like a, a mega you know, bytes. So right now it's a lot easier, you know, very obvious. Um, our prediction for the future is uh, in the future three to five years, online education will be the mainstream of education outside school. Um, of course, um, in, in terms of the, the culture shift or the user experiences, um, I think in this part of the world, I mean in China, uh, people adopt internet as their daily life already pretty much everything. You go buy grocery from internet, you put ticket on internet, you pay everything on internet, you do banking on internet. So learning or receiving education from internet is something already um, um, obvious you know, for everyone here. Yeah. And, and you said about future. So if you can close your eyes and think 10 years ahead, how, how do you see education taking place? If you really see the pain point of education, if you stay in Hong Kong, Shanghai, this first tier city, you don't feel there's any inconvenience of receiving education. But if you go to the third tier city, fourth tier city, you see over there, teachers is a very precious, I should say very limited resources over there. And then students just wanting a good teacher over there. So we, we, see, we went to fourth tier city, like Tianshui city. The teacher has to teach math, English, Chinese, all by the same teacher. But you ask me close my eyes to see 10 years from now. I see in a, it would take 10 years, even faster, probably five years. All the people, students in different city, different tier city, even in a remote area, they be able to receive the same quality uh, teacher through internet to their home. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And, and one thing, now talking about the challenges you face. So as a leader of a very large company, how do you make things happen? The ideas you have and the, the ideas <laughs> your senior leaders uh, uh, have uh, throughout the organization, you know? How, how do you break these barriers internally to get things moving? 
uh, it takes a lot of effort. You know, I, I can say uh, we are already 100% there. But what we do in our uh, system, in our company, is uh, uh, we write, we produce a lot of uh, algorithm because uh, we cannot always depend on people. Uh, people have their own mind in, you know, in a good way, but also sometimes they make mistakes. How do we re reduce mistakes? To us, um, the algorithm is more like an AI driven. Uh, you'd be able to, based on the historic data, and predict the situation, and through the AI algorithm, help you make decision at the scene. And then because you continuously have the data feed into the system, and then every time the decision that you have will get even better precise every time. That's how we manage the globally more than 30,000 teachers around the world. And that's the way that we handle, you know, we are not a very big organization, but we already have 5,000 employees, you know, this working, is a big number. <laughs> working the system. Yeah. So we have all different kind of uh, karma system that uh, collecting uh, behavior, collecting results, collecting the data happening during the process. No matter it's a teaching learning process or executing a project or executing a service, we collect those data with the algorithm that we design, be able to produce, well, I can say 100% a good uh, decision, but a better decision, a best effort decision. Okay, yeah. amazing. And, and my final question is, what would be your advice for organizations uh, that are starting now or for organizations that are still a long way to implement this kind of revolution? So organizations that are suffering uh, uh, the, the pressure of digital technology and other companies. So what would be your advice to them? Uh, I think every entrepreneur or business in nowadays, you have to see data as the gold. Once you have data, you have everything. So with that mindset in place, when I talk about data, I'm not talking about just customer data. I'm talking about employee data. I'm talking about marketing data. Once you have the mindset to collect in all the data, and then with data mindset, you know, with a group of people analyst helping you digest all these data, create a good algorithm, actually, you will be able to uh, scalable in a very short term of period or making a better decision than before. So that would be the advice. Amazing. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time, okay, and for providing this interview. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.